accomplish. All right, we'll begin uh, with uh, Michael Kahn, followed by Bob Wexler. If I could ask you to um, line up on the side of the uh, uh, chamber so that you're prepared to move forward as we go through the list. J. Marvin Campbell, Jerry Rubin, Natasha Bakshuri, and Ryan Mallory to begin. Michael Kahn. Um, the council may have heard that during some rides of cyclists, monthly rides, critical mass rides, there have been recently some encounters with the police. I want to commend, for, before I begin, um, the police itself. Here we have in the room three police officers which are absent at the moment, but they perform very well and show everybody their seat and insist that everybody sit down. Um, on these events, these monthly rides, recently the police has performed less perfect, maybe, because they don't really know how to deal with a phenomenon like these cyclists coming in on the streets and t t uh, t once a month and turning a few rounds and, and disappearing again. And they bring up the traffic code and say there's a red light and you mustn't and so on and so forth. But they misunderstand the whole business of these rides. These are I'm perhaps, I'm not entirely sure if I know what they are, but perhaps they are um, like public theater events where everybody participates and takes possession of the streets in a manner which is not usual, the usual manner of motorized traffic. And um, if, if, you, if you deal with such an um, artistic event, if it is one, then pulling the traffic code and insisting on the authority of a traffic light which comes along almost like a religious authority which must not be um, challenged is maybe, is maybe not quite the right response. And I would like um, the council to instruct the police force to go slowly with the bicycle riders because they are the best we have and the only ones we have. And if we alienate them, uh, um, then we lose them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob Wexler. First, thanks for the opportunity to address you guys. Uh, I'm a long-term resident of, of Culver City, been a participant in uh, critical mass for the past year, and a, an active uh, practicing physician in town. Um, I, I first have to concur with everything that the previous speaker said. And I, I wonder, this uh, increased intervention by the police in our, in our non uh, not really non dramatic event in order to emphasize the positive aspects of cycling in the community. After listening to all the discussions that went on here earlier regarding uh, the, the, the city's plans in improving transportation and improving access and making neighborhoods accessible and bicycle and pedestrian friendly, it seems counterproductive to the current plan. And it's as though the city is planning for the future but uh, repressing us in the present. And it doesn't make sense. Uh, I would like the city council to address the police department's aspects of how they how they should assist us instead of oppressing our ability to just demonstrate our uh, our positive aspect in cycling. Thank you. Thank you, J. Marvin Campbell. Uh, hi, my name is J. Marvin Campbell. I'm a small business owner, a taxpayer, and a regular critical mass rider. Uh, critical mass riders uh, ride for different reasons, but we all have certain things in common. Uh, we all want to represent a positive change in our world, and we all want to assert the bicyclist's right to the road. But most of all, we all just want to go for a ride. Uh, as a taxpayer, uh, I can't help but feel insulted by the uh, amount of resources Santa Monica has dedicated for the sole purpose of harassing a group of people who want to engage in an activity as utterly innocuous is going for a ride on a bicycle. Public safety has been presented as one of the reasons for the recent crackdown, but safety is one of the reasons many people ride with critical mass, as safety in numbers is our only defense against aggressive drivers in a car-centric culture who don't want to share the road with anyone, much less someone on a bicycle. Now, some people maintain that critical mass impedes traffic, but in reality, critical mass is traffic. And I believe that several hundred cyclists should have the right of way over a couple of dozen cars uh, for the relatively short time it takes for us to pass. Uh, after all, in a democracy, the majority rules. Santa Monica has taken great pains to present a progressive and green image to the rest of the world, and devoting this amount of law enforcement just to punish people for riding their bike only serves to tarnish that image. 
we are but the tip of the spear of a wave of change now occurring worldwide. And you can choose to tilt at the windmills of change, or you can choose to be a part of the change that will make our world a better place. I invite you all to grab a bike, swing a leg over, and come ride with us. I promise you won't regret it. Thank you. Jerry Rubin, followed by Natasha Vukshuri, Ryan Mallory, Alex Cantanero, and Kieran Menzies. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, two minutes or less. Two minutes. Thanks. Uh, Jerry Rubin, Santa Monica resident. As I said before, I never had a car in my life. Support bicyclists and support what Santa Monica is trying to do to get more bike lanes and make it easier for bikes. I'd like to see a win-win solution on this. And I think the cyclists being here tonight is the first step. And I am pretty sure that it would be a pretty, uh, pretty positive thing if the city manager and the mayor and the other council members were to meet with them, uh, talk with them, members of the police. I've been talking with them. These people are our future, hopefully. I can say there is a win-win solution. I know uh, when I monitor uh, pedestrian marches, though, we do stop for the stoplights and we go ahead. It doesn't lose the integrity because there could be an accident. There could be a pedestrian crossing the street that could get hurt. Just because something hasn't happened before doesn't mean it can't happen. You're not losing any integrity by trying to avoid a possible accident. There's a way to do it logistically. I've monitored hundreds of events, and I'd at least say, see if it works. See if it works. But I would urge that there not be an adversarial position. They're here today making a positive statement that we've got to get out of our cars, we've got to get onto the bicycles, another mass transit, and that is imperative. So I urge you to take the leadership to set up more communication. Thank you. Thank you. Natasha Vakshuri. Hello, Council Members. Um, my name is Natasha Vakshuri. I'm a SMC student at Santa Monica College. And I've been riding with Cricket Old Mass for about a year and a half now and have developed close relations with most people in the cycling community from this monthly ride. I come here today to inform you of what Critical Mass is and um, how it is, what it means for Santa Monica City at large. Santa Monica Critical Mass was spawned from the growing popularity of this ride on a global scale, for example, in San Francisco, Paris, and Budapest. For almost three years, Santa Monica Critical Mass has continually met every first Friday of the month to celebrate the joys and virtues of riding bicycles. We are a self-organized leader list structure with date, time, and meeting places being the only thing that is set. Routes will change from month to month, but we maintain some con consistencies, such as uh, special guest appearances around downtown Santa Monica and um, through Abbott Kinney and the ever satisfying circles around Windward Circle in Venice. It's misrepresentation to say that critical mass meets for any political obligation. Like I said before, critical mass is a celebration, a, a spontaneous gathering for all kinds of people and their bikes. Glorious responses come from every participant who rides, all of them laughing, playing, and just um, on all around reverberating, reverberating a positive vibe in and out of the mass. It's amazing how many people break out of their shells, a.k.a. the cars, <laughs> and feel safe to ride their bikes because of, the ga of this gathering. For myself, Critical Mass has inspired me to start a bicycling club um, on the Santa Monica College campus with my friend Liz Brown. Some of the club members are here tonight who also feel strongly about creating a solid community for cyclists in Santa Monica. I think it's worth mentioning that several of them I have met through Critical Mass. I am proud to be a part of the Santa Monica community as we are shifting gears to a sustainable functioning city. I've attended a land use and circulation, uh, circulation element meeting for Santa Monica in which we discussed... And we thank you for your Please comments. let me say my conclusion. I I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> okay. uh, we have to hold firm to the time limit. Ryan Mallory. Oh. Okay, I'm Ryan Mallory. I'm a PhD graduate student at UCLA. I've been living in uh, West LA, Santa Monica area for about four and a half years, and I've been participating with uh, Critical Mass for the two, almost three years it's been riding. 
Um, and generally, I just want to go over what happened on the last critical mass ride for you guys to know. We met up at Ocean in Colorado. It was about 100 people. And as we left, we were going to take a left on the Ocean Boulevard, go up to San Vicente Boulevard, and go back east. As soon as riders began going out, when we had a green light, a series of about eight cops, some on bikes, some on motorcycles, and a couple on uh, in the police cars, came up and quickly stopped them and began ticketing them for riding in the street and also not having street lights, which they should have had street lights because that's really dangerous. But as they stopped those that first group going through, the second group <clears throat> that went on the next light had to go around them to you know pass them and as they were passing them the cops then stopped them and saying because they went out of bike line to go around the cops they were then riding in the street and began giving them citations for that they gave citations to one bicyclist who ended up going on the sidewalk to avert around everything I ended up being stopped questioned and looked at for three minutes and after the cop couldn't find anything wrong with me or my bike said, okay, I'm just giving you a warning now, you can go. And I really, I just, we're trying to do something positive for the community. And I know it might inconvenience people as they see us and we block, block traffic for a minute for them, but we're trying to get people into their bikes, you know, out of their cars and into their bikes. And whatever way we can do that, I think is a good thing. So I'd like you guys to work with us. Thank you. Alex Contenero. My name is Alex Contenero. I'm an 18-year resident of Santa Monica and a participant of Santa Monica Critical Mass. I no longer contribute to one of Santa Monica's biggest problems, traffic. Santa Monica has taken many steps to make itself more bicycle friendly. Bicycle racks on a big blue bus, bicycle valet, bicycle lanes, share the road signs on major boulevards and side streets, Still, Santa Monica is not a safe city to ride your bicycle in. The Santa Monica Police Department did not improve the situation with their actions on November 2nd. The Santa Monica Police Department say that November 2nd enforcement was for public safety. Parking police vehicles in a bicycle lane and forcing bicyclists to merge left into the right lane is not in the interest of public safety. Citing bicyclists when they merge left, allowed by the California Vehicle Code 21201 Section 3, is unfair. Creating an obstruction, pictured here, in the bicycle lane is not in the interest of public safety. Issuing 32 bicycle citations is not in character with the bicycle-friendly image Santa Monica desires. This photograph is of two motorists driving in the bicycle lane, which the police ignored numerous times and instead ticketed cyclists. Police officers were present to film our pre-ride announcements, which were to obey the law, don't run red lights, be safe, and have fun. Close to 500 printouts of the California Vehicle Code regarding bicycle riding were handed out to participants by myself. Santa Monica Critical Mass, not the Santa Monica Police Department, attempted to enforce public safety. My mom couldn't be here tonight, but sends this caption along with the photograph. I enjoy riding my tricycle to the Santa Monica Farmer's Market on Sunday. I enjoy riding in a group with my son and his girlfriend because it makes me feel safe. Cars are dangerous. Promoting bicycling is in the interest of public safety. I can't help but wonder how many pedestrians George Russell Weller would have murdered had he plowed a bicycle through Farmer's Market. And I am taking pedal error into consideration. Thank you. I have a question for you, sir, from Councilmember Dancer. Now, you said that um, there was a car in the bike lane and the police ignored it. Do you know what the law is with regard to bicycle, with regard to automobiles in the bike lane? Um, yes, the vehicle cannot enter the bicycle lane without signaling and before the broken line. No, that's not the law, actually. It's 200 feet under the vehicle code. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kiran Menzies, followed by Hanako, Davina Sevilla, and Alex Thompson. Uh, my name is Kieran Menzies. I am 25 years old and I work as a recording engineer in Santa Monica. I am a Santa Monica Critical Mass participant. During the Critical Mass ride on November 2nd, I was the first of 32 bicyclists to receive a traffic citation. I was cited for moving into a number two lane in order to pass a slow moving car, a legal maneuver according to the California Vehicle Code. Having done nothing wrong, 
I assume the officer issuing my citation did not actually know the law he was trying to enforce. However, as the night developed, it became clear that the officer had just trumped up a charge. Bicyclists were being pulled over for any reason that the police could come up with. Police were handing out citations for Ill illegitimate infractions or minor laws that they rarely ever enforce under normal circumstances. Their goal was to criminalize participants of uh, critical mass. Police are supposed to serve us by enforcing laws written to protect us, but here they were specifically targeting critical mass participants with unwarranted harassment by over-enforcing or distorted those, distorting those laws. I can call that by no other word but an abuse of power. The department, uh, the police department deny their agenda against critical mass participants. Lieutenant Padilla was quoted saying, it's no different than what we have been doing in the past, but this is obviously not true. Why are the police lying to us about their critical mass crackdown? Santa Monica Police Department's actions have already garnered criticism from the press and numerous members of the Santa Monica community, as you can see. And I have personally lost a lot of trust in these civil servants. I asked the city of Santa Monica, uh, the city of Santa Monica to please uh, order the police department to cease their political initiative against critical mass. It's a misuse of our law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Hanako? How are all of you this evening? Right. Uh, can I just start with um, a show of hands of how many people are here supporting um, critical mask and cycling in general? Um, I just would like to point out that that was pretty much almost every hand in the room. And uh, in, in general, but that's, that's a lot of people to be here at this time of night. Um, my name is Hanako Moondance. I'm 22 years old, and I am a born and raised Santa Monica resident. Um, I work as an accounting assistant on Colorado and Lincoln. I am also a library page at the main library on Santa Monica and 6th. I also tutor at the Fairview Library on 21st and Ocean Park. And I also attend as a student SMC, Santa Monica College on Pico and 20th. I am very involved in Santa Monica and I commute uh, by my bicycle. And it took me a while starting in June becoming comfortable and riding the streets and in some cases being fearful of being struck by a car. And even though I became more familiar with, in some cases, the assistance of um, the streets that provide bike lanes, um, I was somewhat deterred because I did not have a community to su support me and uh, didn't really have that sort of positive influence. And that was true until October when I went on my first critical mass ride. And I had never felt safer. I had never felt like I had much, so much fun riding my bicycle and being able to do it with so many people who really appreciated it and did it for so many reasons, whether it was fun or safe or helping the environment or providing awareness about bicycles. And I just think it's important for that reason and so many more. Thank you. Thank you. Davina Sevilla? Sevilla. Hi, council members. Um, good evening. Excuse me, I'm a little bit under the weather. Um, hi, my name is Davina Sevilla. I've been a resident of Santa Monica since I was two years old. I'm a college honors student, and I work as a teacher's aide for the LA Unified School District. I also volunteer with Heal the Bay in the Biona Wetlands Restoration Project. I'm a Santa Monica critical mass participant. I've been thrilled to participate in the critical mass rides for the past three or four months because it is a group event that enables me to actually feel safe on the road while riding my bike. I also enjoy critical mass because bicycles are zero emission vehicles and they provide a calm and peaceful way to interact with the community. One morning I was hit by a motor vehicle while riding my bicycle alone to work. I was hit adjacent to City Hall in front of the police station when a car backed out without looking. I was badly bruised and scraped, but I have not been deterred from riding. This is in part due to critical mass. Critical mass and some of its regular participants have empowered me by sharing their personal stories and safety tips for cycling on the road. I also continue to ride my bicycle because it is environmentally sustainable. Bicycling is a sustainable mode of transportation, as the city prob probably already knows, considering its highly touted sustainability plan and sustainability award. But awards and ideals are sometimes often further from reality than not, as I came to find out on November 2nd. For the first time in all of my years of residency, I felt unsafe in Santa Monica. This occurred when police officers pulled up to our gathering spot atop the pier and began filming us. 
I was made to feel like a criminal for seeking solidarity with other citizens who enjoy riding their bicycles. There were over 32 citations issued that night, but the final citation I witnessed that night was given to a gentleman who was walking his bike without a backlight. Walking his bike without a backlight. A neighbor walking her dog nearby came over, came over to us to learn what the commotion was about, to which she scoffed angrily. My car gets broken into almost on a weekly basis, and they don't have time to police my neighborhood, but they have time to harass bicyclists. I sincerely hope City Council has the time to ensure that bicyclists will not be harassed nor discriminated against when we are directly, directly contributing to the goals of sustainability. I would like to see the ride survive. I would like to see the bicycling culture within Santa Monica thrive and grow. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Alex Thompson, followed by Roger Swanson, Richie Thomason, Gern Trowbridge, and Russell Buchan. Hello. My name is Alex Thompson, and I'm a 27-year-old graduate student at UCLA. I regularly do business and socialize in Santa Monica, and I am a participant of Santa Monica Critical Mass. I'd like to approach the issue of critical mass from a slightly different angle. What will happen if the police department continues to place priority on citing critical mass participants? Specifically, what will be the long-term effects on Santa Monica's journey to sustainability? The police department proved it can break up any particular critical mass at will, and doing so may reduce motorist complaints and assuage the depart department's concerns about public safety. However, in breaking up critical mass on November 2nd, police cited 32 cyclists, many erroneously. The result is a strong feeling of resentment toward the city amongst critical mass participants. In turn, the argument of scrutiny of police by cyclists has probably generated frustration within the police department. Formal complaints and court battles to come surely will ag aggravate these feelings. For the city, the best way to promote cycling is to facilitate cyclist efforts to encourage others to bicycle. Bad relations between the city, cyclists and the city hurt the ability of Santa Monica to promote cycling and place a black mark on Santa Monica's green record, if not also a mark on its reputation for tolerance. This isn't theoretical. There has already been significant bad press. Obviously, the destruction of critical mass is not desirable for its participants, and considering cyclist city relations, it is not desirable for the city of Santa Monica either. Therefore, I ask the council to consider letting mass ride, perhaps by deprioritizing the citation of cyclists in large group rides. Thank you. Thank you. Roger Swanson. Good evening. I'm Roger Swanson. I'm a nine-year resident of Santa Monica, and I'm also a retired management consultant. Uh, I have participated in critical mass rides for about a year, and it's really the only time that I really feel safe on the streets at night. Um, it, while I applaud what the city has done over the years uh, for biking, the streets are not safe for solo riders, particularly at night. Witness the number of riders on sidewalks, both day and night. This is illegal in Santa Monica, yet many riders choose a risk of, of a ticket rather than riding on the streets. Uh, motor vehicles are a constant threat to these riders, and they are the public safety uh, issue that needs to be addressed. Driving off critical mass will not make the streets safer for other riders. If the, if the police department goal is to promote safety, this can be done either by confrontational enforcement or education. If I were the police chief, I'd start education having, and have officers on bikes handing out Bike Santa Monica which has an excellent section on keeping yourself safe. This could be done at critical mass rides as the riders are forming. That way you could reach up to 300 riders at one time and educate them on what the laws are in the city. Police enforcement of the last ride for bikes without lights was what I would categorize as discriminatory. My opinion is that the law is selectively and infrequently enforced. As a management consultant with expertise in statistical analysis, I'd be happy to offer my services free of charge to the police department to analyze tickets issued in the last two years for bikes without lights. I will provide my services free only if the results get published. Remember, without d data, we only have opinions. Our government needs to be transparent, not opaque. Almost 70 years ago, this building was dedicated to truth, liberty, and tolerance. We need more of that today. Finally, I would like to suggest that the council and staff instruct. Well, Thank you very you. much. Richie Thomason. Good evening, or good morning, almost. 
Uh, my name is Richie Thomason. I'm a 22-year-old freelance photographer and videographer. I wanted to start off by saying thank you for making Santa Monica my favorite place to bike in a 20-mile radius. And I say 20 not because 21 miles are someplace better, but I just don't feel like riding that far. But I've been a bicyclist commuter for about a year now, and until six months ago, when I participated in my first uh, critical mass, I never felt quite safe nor welcome biking on the streets of Santa Monica. And riding with this group of amazingly friendly people uh, has only encouraged me to make, to make use of the beautiful bike lanes that you have and to bring my social life to downtown Santa Monica. I was under the impression that critical mass was something that the city supported up until these past two months. With over 30 citations, a blatant targeting of bicyclists, and officers that ignore civilian questions and concerns, not to mention the countless motorist violations that got, had gone unpunished in plain sight of the officers. I don't understand the sudden change of mood from Santa Monica, but I would hate to see the one culture that keeps my friends and I coming back to Santa Monica to socialize, work, and ride go flat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, Dr. Holbrook has a question for you. Sir? Can I ask a question? Thompson? I want to ask, were you on the ride, the, the ride in question? Yes. I came late, but I was on the ride. Uh, just clarify something for me. Sure. Where did the ride start? Uh, California and Ocean. In the middle of the street? No. I mean, sorry, Colorado and Ocean. No, it started uh, near yeah, the canyon, which is on the northwest corner. All right. And, in and the park you, area. So you left the park, and where did you go then? Uh, I didn't catch up, start with the ride, so I don't know where they started. I came late. Okay, maybe somebody else knows. I, well, they'll, they'll tell us. About that. I was just curious where it went from the cannon. That's all. And what, okay, so let's, let's, so let's, where did you go now, Dr. Holbrook? I want to. I don't want you to have a conversation with the oh. entire group. Let's have. Oh. We'll, we'll be calling other people. That's just not a good habit for us to get into. Um, I to, well, we'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll get an answer. Gern Trowbridge may have the answer for you. Or uh, Russell Buchan, Susan Hartley, Michael. Unfortunately, I wasn't at that ride. Cardiol, the rides okay. always start, though, next to the lobster as you drop down to the pier. That park right there is where the ride starts. So, well, ask somebody who was there because I want to wear it where it went. That's let's what. have your comments and then we can ask questions. Hello, my name is Robert Trowbridge. Thank you for hearing my, uh, my talk to you this evening. Um, I'm currently a resident of West Los Angeles. My parents met in uh, the 50s and started my family in Santa Monica, getting married here and raising the family. I have uh, ridden my bicycle all, every year of my life except for the two years after I got my driver's license. Um, I stopped riding my bike in high school because my friend was hit and killed um, by a car. So I did not ride my bike on a street. Um, until about three years ago when I started riding with Critical Mass in Santa Monica. And, of course, everything you've heard here I believe in. It's absolutely changed my outlook. I now commute whenever I can. I work in the entertainment industry, so unfortunately sometimes my jobs are too far and I have to drive. But I certainly cherish and love the times that I get to ride. And uh, my friends are constantly saying, hey, it's late, I'll give you a ride home. No, no, you don't understand. This is my best part of the day. So. I'd really appreciate it if you'd take it to heart that um, there have been some uh, some problems and that really the community really does want it to go on. Um, my only antidote, unfortunately, the the one time I got taken out by a rollerblader on the bike path, I went straight to a police officer with the person who ruined my bike, and there was nothing done. I was no ticket was given, nothing was done. I was told I got to go home and go buy a new new bike frame. So. Uh, we really appreciate it, and thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Trubridge, I have a question for you. Um, you've you've um, spoken about some positive things that uh, critical mass has, has brought to your life. Do you think that um, critical mass could bring positive things to your life or to one's life without breaking the law? Yes, actually, I do. I um, I participated in a meeting with the police department earlier this year, and uh, we we spoke about about this uh, this situation. And uh, I, my brother is a current police officer. My grandfather was the sheriff, and I have the vehicle code. There is there is nothing that I've done that I that is illegal. Um, well, I wasn't referring to you. I was no, no, referring I to the so group. And my, my understanding of uh, what's gone on 
with these rides is that masses of bicyclists end up blocking intersections and running uh, right. and going through uh, the, um, the, through red lights. So is there a way to have the positive yes. impact without doing those things? I feel there is, and what I told the police department was that um, we, the only single law that I can see that we would be breaking if critical mass were to continue as it does in other cities, meaning they start, and when they come to an intersection, if it's red light, they stop. But if they're going through the intersection and it turns green and you've got the mass, they stay together until they clear the light. That is, quote, the red light infraction. Um, it sounds, that, sounds like an infraction. Right. So, so is, there, is there a way so yes. to have so a positive did, impact so without did, doing that? Certainly. We did. And if I'm not mistaken, they said follow all laws. They were not stopped immediately for running red lights. So I wasn't there, but on in past rides of... I've ridden in San Francisco, Los Angeles, many other cities for this, and the police are just there watching the ride, making sure everything's moving smoothly. So, yes, I did bring that to the table. It is not something that I lead. It's something that I can say, and, you know, sure, I'll follow the laws. The, the ride, so the, the last ride. If we ride stop at the lights, it, it will only. The last ride that, that you're referring to, um, where there were a number of. of um, stops made by the by the police, um, the other riders continued on. Is that right? Correct. But I was actually disheartened to hear that some police officers were giving tickets for vehicles, to meaning bicycles, to legally go around the impediment in the bike lane. See, S Santa Monica police is going by wording that is not in the vehicle code. There is nothing that says. In fact, there's statements well, saying that you're entitled to go in the Okay, so I, I understand you're, you're questioning whether or not that's an actual infraction, and I'm, I'm not going to have a discussion with you about that because, you know, I'm not, I'm not the judge right. who will end up So, yes, no, I think that but if we did stop at lights, then, then there would be no problem. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. Um, Russell Buchan, Susan Hartley, Michael Guardiol, David Bolog, and Jack Ford. Hi, I'm Russell Buck, and uh, I'd like to address your question, if I may. Uh, would critical or could critical mass still have a positive effect if all laws were followed and there were absolutely no uh, infractions? Yes, it could, but at the cost of creating a logistical nightmare, breaking up the ride, making it take longer to get through town, and snarling up uh, motor traffic even more than it is said to do already. So would the impact still be positive? Yes. Would it be as positive? Frankly, no. And back to what I was going to say, I just wanted to express my uh, frank amazement at the extent to which the actions of the city of Santa Monica in suppressing critical mass are at odds with its self-image as a progressive city and a city that supports alternative transportation. Now, uh, during the presentation on agenda item 8F, we were shown a land use document in which we were told that the community desires multimodal options for transportation. And the three bullet points for that were pedestrians, bicyclists, and limit cars. And that's kind of an awkward way of putting it, but basically what we were being told is that the community wants more walking, more biking, and less cars on the street. So clearly the city is at least nominally aware of the problem caused by the domination of public roads by uh, private motor cars. And with that in mind, I just can't help but wonder why the city and the police department are going to such an effort to squelch a monthly activity that serves as a living example of the use of public roads for purposes other than private motor traffic. This, this issue can be resolved, but it has to be resolved through communication, not through uh, belligerent police action. Critical mass is not the enemy. Thanks. Thank you. Susan Hartley? I hate to break their momentum, but I think they're terrific. Well, this is not breaking the momentum. They're a terrific group, and I'm going to get my bicycle out, and I want to join them. Uh, this, but that's not why you're here. That's right. But uh, <laughs> one thing is that I noticed there's uh, stuff on the agenda about the legislative banners, but nothing yet still about the runway safety areas, the ordinance regarding the C&D aircraft, or the legislative lobbying direction. And I urge you, it's a really dangerous com condition we have out there. Jets are landing, are, are, 
are crashing around the globe and it's santa monica is is set to have that happen to we were out there today with the ficus trees i was out there and the workers are cutting and damaging the roots to the trees we've been photographing that they're not supposed to be doing that since we're up for landmark status and also for safety reasons uh... all the neighborhood associations have endorsed keeping the ficus trees uh... twenty third street uh, needs to have some stop signs or some some look at calming the traffic and making it safe so that pedestrians and dog walkers, any dog, dog walkers can cross that street. It's a freeway south of Ocean Park. And then find a couple other things. Veterans Day was, yes, well, was, was yesterday and I was really saddened to see that Santa Monica was open for business on Veterans Day. I work with the veterans at the beach. I know how important it is to the veterans. And I was also saddened by reading about the young 23-year-old uh, heirs boy from Santa Monica. Uh, and I want to also acknowledge, I, I acknowledge your loss. I know how hard it is to lose a brother. But Veterans Day, we lost a veteran and a very activist in the community all over L.A. Jerry Schnitzer passed away. And I want to acknowledge his passing. And he was a dear veteran and a dear contributor to Arlington West. Uh, one other thing. I didn't get to talk on 8C, but, you know, I was heartened to see there was some juggling of funds to, to make it, and we could do that to Thank save you. the ficus trees. Thank you, Ms. Hartley. Uh, Michael Guardiol. Hi. Thanks for having me uh, speak. Um, I, my name is Michael Guardiol, and I am an advocate for bicycles. And I... Uh, doesn't mean I'm anti-car, uh, anti but uh, I've been riding my bicycle more and more in the last couple of years to work, um, and I've been losing weight because of it and uh, feeling healthy and getting out more often, and I've been making a lot of friends uh, through Critical Mass and other group rides that I've been doing. And um, so I am here to encourage group cycling. I, I am here to inspire others to want to ride their bicycle, to find alternate modes of transportation, and to ride uh, in numbers because it's safer. You're able to warn uh, other people you're riding with of oncoming obstructions, of cars pulling out of the driveway, of potholes, you know, uh, uh, so it is safer to ride in the group. Um, critical mass, uh, their intention is sort of, in my opinion, it's a demonstration to the public that we have rights to the road as cyclists. We, California Vehicle Code says we have full access to the, the road and we um, need to act like a vehicle. And so most people don't know that, that that is uh, California Vehicle Code 20, that one. Um, most people don't know that. Most people don't th think that bicycles belong on the sidewalk, and that's the way it should be. So um, I wanted to make two points to promote awareness of cyclists' rights and to um, encourage group cycling um, and within the community and with Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. David uh, Bolog, is it? Jack Ford, followed by Inaki Martinez Creel, Mark Peterson, Kyle Hurtler, and Jennifer Armstrong. Okay. Um, my name is uh, Jack Ford. I'm a 21 year old full time resident of. Uh, Santa Monica. I grew up in the city. Uh, I pretty much rode my bike uh, a lot as a kid, but um, until about a year ago I was driving and it was actually a critical mass and seeing these uh, these big group rides that sort of inspired me to, to take up cycling again. And uh, it's been good for the community, it's been good for my health. Um, it's really inspired me and uh, it's been one of the greatest things to, to really been happening. I look forward to critical mass every month. Um, and I felt that writing before, that it, every time I'd see a pedestrian or someone else in a car, I might be inspiring them to ride. Um, as of the, the last ride and the uh, way that the police were handling it and the amount of people being pulled over, I felt that uh, 
we were no longer putting up the message and that allowing the police to take this activity was, if anything, discouraging people that were watching to, to ride their bikes. And, and looking at this, they, they might be, may be afraid to ride in Santa Monica from that point. Um, and I just feel that it's a, it's a shame. Thank you. Jack Ford? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then check your name off there. <laughs> That's right, you almost got four minutes. Inaki Martinez Creel. Hello, uh, I'm a member of Santa Monica. I resident, I'm a resident here. I've lived here for about six months. And critical mass has helped me in numerous ways. It has helped me physically. It has helped my self-esteem. And most of all, it has helped my overlook on life. I, I used to be afraid to go out and do things because of a neurological disorder. And when I started doing critical mass, that psychological block was released, essentially. And as a result, I can now go out for walks, hang out with friends at night, no longer live in fear. Also, critical mass, people assume that they're blocking traffic, they're causing problems, but really what they're doing is promoting less traffic. If there, everyone rides bicycles, there will be far less traffic as they are smaller, more nimble, and basically use a lot less space. Traffic is caused because motor, motorists slow down a lot because of the car in front of them slowing down. In a bicycle, it is very easy to swerve around someone who is going slower. Critical mass also helps with the environment. Bicycles do not emit gases, do not provide pollution, also, the oil isn't used and gas, and it also helps financially with gas for the riders. I ride my bicycle almost everywhere I go with the exception of school because I have to go through Sepulveda Pass and, you know, I just don't feel safe doing that yet. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, uh, Mark Peterson. Hi, my name is uh, Mark Peterson. I'm uh, I'm a cyclist. Um, I uh, don't own a car, and I've participated in a great many group bicycle rides over the last two years or so. And I just want to make the point that these group rides are legitimate use of public roads. Um, many people use their motor cars to um, to go to movies, to go to concerts, uh, to go shopping, and this in although it's a little maybe a little different has a different quality it's legitimate use and I believe that it has done more to encourage cycling than about anything else I can think of uh, many people are not as afraid to take to the streets on a bicycle and I see many new people at a lot of these group rides who have, who have been afraid to be out on the street on a bicycle and I think as long as your goal is to encourage cycling and to and to bring more uh, forms of transportation into your city, I think it would be unwise to try and uh, stamp out a uh, ride such as critical mass. Thank you. Thank you. Kyle Hurtler. My name is Kyle Hurtler. I'm going to keep my topics concise. I'm a resident of West LA, uh, two blocks from the Santa Monica border. I am a student at the Art Institute. Uh, 31st in Ocean Park, and I am also a military veteran. Um, I would say that the majority of my business, both both uh, public and personal, is done in Santa Monica. Uh, I own a car. The number of times that I've driven it in the past four months, I can count on one hand. And. <clears throat> Driving or riding my bike, excuse me, through Santa Monica, it really kind of opens my eyes to what's out there as far as the mentality of the drivers. Um, I just think a lot more awareness needs to be put on, you know, bike safety in regards to the other drivers out there. And thank you. Thank you. Jennifer Armstrong, Austin Draper, David Fuhrer, 
Stephen Burt and Philip Weil. <clears throat> Thank you. It's very exciting, uh, distinguished council members, Mr. Mayor, city officers. My name is Jennifer Armstrong. I have participated in critical mass uh, for the past three years. I have been a writer on Friday Night Skate, which is another tradition that has gone on in Santa Monica for over 11 years. <clears throat> Santa Monica is a world-class city. Proximity to Los Angeles and joins us with other great cities like Paris, Berlin, and London. In all of those cities, there are regular group events with, that go on on a weekly basis without incident and involve thousands of people. These are destination events that draw people from all over the planet and indeed, indeed often serve as vacation destinations. All of these have one thing in common, though. In all of these rides, in all of these events, the police participate, they protect, and they ensure the participants' safety. The real issues being addressed <coughs> beneath the safety issues cited are insignificant courtesies, no more uncommon than those regularly granted for funerals, official motorcades, and other momentary events that occur in society, impromptu or otherwise. Hey. Attacked by the podium. Excuse me. <coughs> Uh, these groups have no members, they have no leaders, and as such, they have no means of requesting protection or support through normal channels. <clears throat> this leaves me with two questions for the Council. <clears throat> Why does a city like Santa Monica, <clears throat> who prides itself for being at the forefront of environmental quality of life issues, take an adversarial position to the people who are themselves pushing for the same issues? My, my clear question to the council is, can the council ask the police to please lead these side citizens and ensure their safety? Thank you. Austin Draper. Hi, council. Um, I'm going to make this quick. Uh, my name is Austin Draper, and I am a Santa Monica resident for my whole life, and I am a senior at Santa Monica High School and an avid gardener and bicyclist and um, I like to do whatever I can to help out with my community. I help out volunteer at the Santa Monica Mountains and with Heal the Bay and I believe that as a city striving towards sustainability we as a community should encourage bike transportation rather than making residents fearful of riding by having cops single out bike riders um, such as this past critical mass bike ride and um, we need to back off the bike riders and focus on more issues more important issues within the community and um, protect those ficus trees on fourth and second thank you David Fuhr good evening uh, and thank you for listening to us um, my name is David Foyer uh, I've lived shopped and or worked in Santa Monica for over 25 years. Um, about two and a half years ago, I bought a bike from a shop here in Santa Monica. Um, my, it's my first bike since elementary school, so I've had to rediscover how to ride. Um, I now bicycle commute three to four days a week. Uh, that's a 15-mile round trip for me. I also visit friends and do many of my errands by bicycle. Um, normally, I bike alone. Most of my friends don't ride and I commute alone to work. So when I stumbled upon the Santa Monica critical mass bike ride about a year and a half ago, um, it introduced me to uh, what I discovered is a growing bicycle community here on the west side. And even though there are uh, many social bike rides around, um, critical mass is the only one uh, that I take part in regularly. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's not just about bicycles, it's about community. Um, and it's about all kinds of people, engineers and students and artists, musicians, teachers, um, younger people, older people, middler people. Um, there, there, there's more to life than uh, honking your horn from inside of your mobile glass box. Uh, bicycling is about fresh air, healthy exercise, getting places, and having fun. Um, so let's make Santa Monica safe and friendly for uh, bicyclists. It's good policy. It's good community. It's for uh, a green future. 
Um, I invite you to come to the next Santa Monica Critical Mass Ride, a uh, first Friday of the month, 6.30 p.m. Uh, at the Cannon by the, by the end of the pier. Uh, the ride starts at 7. Thank you. <laughs> Stephen Burtz, followed by Philip Weil, Elizabeth Hunter, Paul Bringetto, and John Korber. My name is Stephen Burt, and I've been a resident of Santa Monica for about a year, and I've been to three critical mass rides, including the last one. I'm not going to repeat what everyone else has already said. I think I agree with it fully, and I would just like to ask the council help us work on a way that this ride can continue to be a useful part of the community and a positive part of the community um, in support of your goals of sustainability and a wide variety of transportation options for people. Thank you. Thank you. Philip Weil? Hi, my name is Philip Weil, and I'm a bicycle commuter. <clears throat> I commute to work and everything else I go to um, by bicycle. And biking in, in the city can be a really stressful and overall um, oppressive experience um, often. And uh, Critical mass supplies uh, a, an experience of um, safety and community that's really valuable and can open up the experience of bicycling and its possibilities of getting around the city um, uh, in a really neat way. Um, and I wanted to speak to the to the issue of going through red lights during the rides. Um, just to try to understand sort of a, a really important aspect of the rides for me. Um, like I said, it can be a really, a really rough time out there riding alone, um, uh, uncomfortable um, to say the least. Is that it? Yeah, um, the, bell, the, the, um, the bell sounded even though you can barely hear it. Okay, Thank you for your comments. Elizabeth Hunter? Hi, my name is Elizabeth Hunter. I'm a student at SMC, and I actually wanted to talk about the red light issue. Um, there seems to be a definite um, block in the road where the issue is that we're essentially breaking the law by going through the red lights. But I want to point out that by breaking up the ride, we end up with cars in the middle of the ride, which is really, really dangerous because there are cyclists all around and it's just really hard to know where they are. And I think a really good solution would be to look at a city like San Francisco that um, has kind of taken the standpoint of helping the ride and they actually cork intersections which is blocking off the traffic so that the ride can ride through as one and I think it would be really good for Santa Mon Monica to take the stance of supporting the ride and you know that way we wouldn't be doing anything illegal because we would have the support of the city and the ride would would be effective it would function the way it's meant to and it would remove any of the public safety hazard that seems to be an issue thank you thank you Paul Bring Bringetto Hello, my name is Paul Bringetto. I've been a resident of Santa Monica for the past seven years. I commute on a bicycle every day and have been riding with Santa Monica Critical Mass for the past two years. I concur with the statements of all the previous speakers who came before me and would like to request that the council instruct the police department to take a more lenient approach and embrace the ride. Thank you. Thank you. John Corber. Uh, thank you. I'm uh, a 52-year-old um, bicycle commuter and motorist and user occasionally of public transportation. Um, I'm here to speak uh, in support of a critical mass, although I was not on the ride. Um, I uh, do attend social rides, uh, bicycle rides regularly, and I find them uh, a great source of community and uh, something that encourages, encourages me and others to um, continue uh, moving towards the bicycle as a mode of transportation um, in combination with other modes as well as uh, as well as a, an ultimate way of uh, doing the best we can to, to get around with the least impact um, social writing is, is a new it's a new social fabric uh, and I would encourage Santa Monica to embrace it thank you thank you 
We have, uh, let's see, next, uh, Linda Armstrong, Gregory Bogel, Nancy, Stephen Box, Dan Benvenista, Colin Bogart, Dallas Wexler, Linda Armstrong, not here, Gregory Bogle, did I call John Corber? That's who just spoke, right? Hello, uh, my name is Gregory Bogle. Uh, I'm a full-time cyclist, I live in Palms. Uh, I want to say three things that have been said to me by police officers recently uh, that are not nowhere in the code. One is we're not we're we can only ride two abreast. It says that nowhere. You cannot pass on the left. I've been told that numerous times, and it doesn't say that. Stay in the bike lane. It doesn't say that in the code either. That that's mandatory for bicycles. All right, but I want to talk about a scourge in Santa Monica. The scourge is large SUVs. They, uh, Hummers are 10,000 pounds. H2s are 8,000 pounds. Escalades, Navigators, and most Range Rovers are also over 6,000 pounds. They cause problems. They're huge. You can't see around them as a bicyclist, as a pedestrian, as a car driver. Uh, they cause traffic. They pollute more. Not only do they use more gas, but they also pollute more because of federal regulations uh, each gallon burned in an SUV pollutes more. They're also deadly. In an accident, an SUV is more likely to cause a, a fatality than a car. Also, infrastructure. They, they, uh, they're so heavy that they make the roads run out earlier. They, they impact the roads badly, especially the California incline. Now, there's a solution, and Santa Monica already has it. Res, uh, resolution 312-680. Enforce it. Weight limitations. It shall be unlawful for any vehicle having a gross weight, including load in, SF, in excess of three tons, to be operated on any street within this city, except for these uh, listed below. So please enforce this law. Get these SUVs off the streets and make it safer for the rest of us. Uh, and go critical mass. And I was at the critical mass. We made. We went out. We made a left on Ocean, and. Uh, there were three different groups of us leaving. Uh, we all waited for the light. And by the time we got less than 100 yards north on Ocean, we were being given Thank tickets. You. Thank you. NC? Was that right? Hi, oh, yes. Hi, my name is NC. I live in Hollywood. I'm car free. I write to Santa Monica on a regular basis on auditions. I'm an actress. I'm going to audition here tomorrow for a commercial for filming photography work and also for social events which include critical mass ride. I was born in Hungary which is one of the world's most largest critical mass rides. 50,000 were counted last September and the politicians and the police and forces um, 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 supports the rights, cork the streets to make it safe for all the cyclists from the cars. Um, cyclists, individuals or as groups need to be protected from the cars. I haven't seen any cyclist that hit a car and the driver was hurt. My husband was just picked up. He rode here to the city council meeting. He was hit by a car. It was a hit and run. A red Volkswagen um, 67 model. We need protection. The police needs to, um, at their car critical mass rights, when they're blocking the streets and when they jam up the roads, they should pass out cards to the drivers enforcing the law, telling them how to behave around cyclists and that cyclists belong to the road. Cyclists don't need um, enforcement or, or education. They already get it at city critical mass rights. It's the drivers that need it. And it's a perfect opportunity at the critical car mass rights to enforce the law and give out pamphlets to the drivers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stephen Box. Hi, my name is Stephen Box. I'm on the board of the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. I also serve on the uh, Los Angeles um, on Caltrans Bicycle Advisory Committee, in both cases on the Education Committee. It's crazy out there. I can attest to that from my experience this evening on the way here. 46,000 people will die this year as a result of traffic accidents in the United States of America. We're in this together. It's crazy. It's crowded, and we need to work together on solutions. Transportation engineers say there are five approaches to solving this problem. The first one is engineering. 
I expect that from engineers. But there are four others that I believe strongly in education, enforcement, encouragement, and evaluation. With what's going on in Santa Monica with regards to the critical mass and the police action, I'd have to say that we're, we're failing on all four counts. With regards to education, there's an opportunity. The biggest opportunity right now appears to be educating the police officers on the appropriate application of the law, the vehicle code. As far as encouragement, discouraging cyclists is working against a transportation solution. This is a room full of transportation solutions. As far as uh, uh, enforcement, I, we should be partnering with the police officers with regards to transportation issues in our community. We should be partnering a, instead of having an adversarial relationship. And as far as evaluation, very specifically, I'm here to ask you tonight to look into this situation. Pull the records and find out what tickets are being written. Are they appropriate? Are they exceeding the law? Are they misinterpreting the law? Either way, it's scary, whether it's by design or just because of a lack of understanding of vehicle code. The tickets that are being written for leaving the bike lane are inappropriate and shouldn't be written. If this particular action is to correct a wrong, I, I, I go back to two wrongs don't make a right. But the excessive police action does not correct a wrong. It's, it's even a greater wrong because these are people in a position of authority. So I ask you to look into this. I ask you to convene a a committee are looking at a room full of community leaders. So we'd love to partner with you in a solution with regards to the transportation issues in our community. We'd like to be a part of that. And that's why we believe critical mass is an important opportunity to encourage cycling, to educate cyclists, and to work together as opposed to becoming adversarial. So on that note, I ask for the opportunity to partner with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Dan Benveniste, no applause, please. That violates our council rules. Dan Benveniste. Followed by Colin Bogart, Colin Bogart, I'm sorry, Dallas Waxler, Josh Like, and David Bolog. Hi, my name is Colin Bogart. I'm a resident of East Hollywood. Um, and quite honestly, I actually haven't had an opportunity to participate in Santa Monica Critical Mass. But I rode over here from East Hollywood tonight because I am very concerned about the developing crackdown against cyclists riding Critical Mass each month here in Santa Monica. I believe that an effort to quash critical mass is really just a misuse of city resources and is a erroneous focus on, on what is the real problem. I'm concerned that Santa Monica is going in the same direction possibly as New York City, which is having lots of problems with critical mass and have gone nowhere in the last several years, and potentially follow the lead of San Francisco when Mayor Willie Brown was, uh, um, his administration was in place and he had decided that he wanted to put an end to critical mass, I would ask you to take a cue from San Francisco and that they finally figured out that the best way to make this a successful event is to allow critical mass and to support critical mass um, and to support cyclists. And I'd like to, you know, reiterate what has been already said, which is if you really want Thank you. bike safe. Thank you. Thank you. We have Dallas Wexler next, followed by Josh Like and David Bullock. Da Dallas Wexler, Josh Like. My name is Josh Lake. I've lived in Santa Monica for 10 years. Uh, I have also become a business owner in this community. I'd like to support uh, my friends here and uh, the idea of Santa Monica critical mass. Uh, I take part in that. Um, Santa Monica has taken the position that they want to be a leader in environmental stewardship of this world. Um, we have an opportunity, Santa Monica has an opportunity to further that stance by embracing critical mass and making changes to perhaps the law and maybe 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 we have police escort, um, maybe we change the traffic patterns for a period of time to allow Santa Monica critical mass to continue, but we need to encourage biking, we need to encourage people getting off their, uh, out of their cars onto their bikes, um, and we want to encourage Santa Monica to work with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. David, uh, as uh, um, Ed McMahon used to say to Karnak, I hold in my hand the last envelope, the last shit. David Bullock, I date myself. Yeah, Thank well. you all for staying so late for us to hear us out on what we have to say. Um, I've been riding for 10 years, and people were always amazed at the fact that I could ride 20 miles to work, ride 20 miles home, and they'd be like applauding me and saying, that's a great thing because you're a an answer to the solution of our traffic woes of global warming which if it does hit and when it does hit this city is going to hit it hard so what we have here is solutions um, 
I always thought people would follow my lead and ride with me, but they always had reasons not to. It was not until these group rides, such as Critical Mass, started that I saw the numbers of cyclists on the road grow. It was because they enjoyed themselves, they had a good time, they felt a sense of camaraderie. They saw that from their cars or from the streets as they were walking by. And by allowing your police department to be doing what the people have accounted of, of happening in the last couple of months, uh, to continue on, that's discouraging people to ride. These rides encourage people to get out and be part of the solution. Uh, if you got to meet us all tonight, I can account because I know all these people in the room. They're a great bunch. They're a friendly bunch. They will work together with you. They will answer to you if you call on them for solutions to work with you, the council, the city staff, and your great police department. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I, I should uh, point out to the group, thank you, sir. Um, that um, we're not allowed to take any council action on uh, on 14 items. We're we're here to listen, and uh, any council member can provide comments uh, if he or she likes. Um, uh, for my own part, I also want to point out um, that it is also because the suggestion made that we should instruct the police. Um, we're actually prohibited under the city charter from giving um, that kind of direction um, to. Uh, um, to our staff. Now we can um, ask for ordinance changes, we, we can set policy, um, but we can't change the vehicle code. So there, you know, there's always uh, um, um, some pretty significant limitations on what we as a council can do. Um, that said, I don't know if there's any uh, comments that, uh, additional comments that council members want to add. Ms. Notre? I'm not a council member, but I just thought it might be helpful to, to mention that you, the council has adopted a law which allows group usage of the streets without regard to traffic signals such as this group usage. It's in the community events law. There are limitations in the community events law on uh, how you obtain a permit and where you can do it, but I just wanted to point out that that is, that is there at present. I don't know if people know that or not. And that would, uh, that requires a, uh, a pulling a permit and, and Yes, but it does. But it is something you've done that does allow. It, you did it well before this, this group was known to you, I think, and not with them in mind. But I just wanted to point out that it is possible to use the city streets for a group event without regard to, to traffic signals if you if you do it that way. Right. Well, I want to say I was uh, heartened by some of the uh, positive things I heard tonight and disturbed by some uh, uh, some of the things I heard as well. But uh, I do hope that uh, um, uh, I I know that bicycling is. Uh, uh, going to be a mainstay, and it's going to become an even bigger part of, of our community. I want that to happen in a, um, uh, a safe way, uh, safe for bicyclists, safe for pedestrians, safe for motorists. Um, that's why we have rules and regulations, and sometimes not everybody likes them, but we'll um, try to make things work for everybody. Anyone else? Councilmember McCown? You know, I saw the email that went out, and I was a little bit thrown by the rhetoric about storming the Bastille tonight, but that's, that's really not what happened. Um, it's clear that the critical mass riders came here tonight seeking a dialogue with us, and I think we should respect that. Now, we're not allowed to take any action, the mayor's right. We can ask questions of staff, though. We can, you know, do, do research for possible future action. And we cannot instruct the police to be lenient. Besides being prohibited in the charter, allowing safety laws to be violated would incur responsibilities for us that I don't think we'd want to take. Uh, we are responsible for everybody's safety, whether they're on a bicycle, pedestrian, car, whatever. That said, uh, you know, I come at this from a different perspective than my colleagues, I think, because I think I'm the only one up here who's been on a critical mass ride in Santa Monica. And I did that last spring, and I remember the route. We left the cannon, and we went up Ocean to Santa Monica and turned right. And as it happened, we made all the lights until we hit 4th Street. And at 4th Street, we didn't make the light, and somebody corked the intersection. And as a council member, I just didn't feel comfortable with that. I mean, you know, kids see me riding and think that's great that a council member rides a bike. If they see me running a red light, that's not something I want on my conscience if that kid thinks that was a cool thing to do. So I pulled over in front of REI and left the ride that night, and you all went on and had a good time, I hope. Um, so I know what it is that this is about. I know that feeling of camaraderie. I know the rush that it is to be riding in a group of bicyclists through a city that's usually dominated by cars. I ride every day, and I feel my life threatened. I take my lane. 
but I'm a big guy. When I take a lane, it's taken. It stays taken. Um, so I know what you're facing out there. The question is, can we have critical mass rides in Santa Monica safely? And, Mayor, I think that's the point that you were making, is that you know it, it has to be a safe event. Now, the city attorney has told us, reminded us, actually, that we do have an events ordinance that under certain circumstances allows the use of streets like that. We have a parade ordinance, which I don't think would be applicable because there are certain routes, and they certainly don't include downtown on a Friday night. But somebody, a woman named Jennifer, also mentioned another example, which is funerals. When a funeral happens, somehow we manage to uh, allow them to, to get through intersection safely. So. What I would like to do in respect for the request for a dialogue that the writers came to us with tonight is ask staff to come back to us formally or informally with more information on those different models and just give us a chance to think about how we might be able to make this work for everybody's benefit. Number yes, sir. Well, I know this isn't on our agenda for discussion tonight, so I'm not going to try and enter into discussion, but I. One, I did hear the city attorney say when the issue of funerals was raised, the state law allows it, but the other difference with state law is there are officers, I think they're private officers, but their officers have some authority to do it. They block the intersection with a, you know, and, and they stop traffic in, in a very visible way. It's not just people, the procession just doesn't go through the red lights. And I think that's a significant difference. And essentially, if one followed our event ordinance, that would occur also. Okay, but this is a council dialogue now, so I have to ask you to refrain. You've had your opportunity to address us. Um, anyone else? Dr. Hobart? Yeah, I, I would just like to, uh, um, in the spirit of cooperation, offer some advice. Uh, it is illegal to make a left turn at the top of the pier on Ocean Avenue. You can't turn left until 2nd Street. And so there's signs all posted out there, no left turn, so you... The minute you turn left, that's a ticket. I walked across the crosswalk with my bike. Well, that may be different, but that sounded like people were leaving the head of the pier. So we're going to check the film. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll make this fast, but if you're going to check the events ordinance or whatever we've got, I think you need to look at it a little differently because this is a different group than we've had for events if they're on a regular basis. So maybe we can come up with something that they could do this under whatever events code we have, but I think it's got to get modified because this is one we haven't seen where the intersections we'd have some, some controls.